Um, just want to congratulate um, NC State for um, for making it to the final four and making it hard for us. Um, it was not an easy win, although you know the score may say differently. But I mean, we had to play for 40 minutes in order for us to to win the basketball game. So um, really proud of of them and their effort to get to the final four. Um, and then I'm I'm just proud of our team um, to be able to um, play on this big stage and 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 not play our best basketball in the first half and come back out um, and make some uh, some small adjustments and 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 meet the moment to, to get us to Sunday. At this time, we'll begin questions with the with the student athletes. Michelle, I saw you go first, and we'll go to you, David, on our right hand side. Michelle, if you could raise your hand again. Hi, Michelle Smith from the next. Tahina, this one's for you. Is this why you transferred to have an opportunity to play for a national championship? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And now that we're here, it uh, doesn't feel real, but I'm so happy that we made it. And we got one more game left, and we're really looking excited for that. At David Kloniker Post and Courier, Ashland, 20 rebounds. You said, I think, last game you just wanted to supply some energy. Was that a focal point today, or was it just doing whatever you could to, to help the team? Um, I think it was just doing whatever I could to help the team. I really wasn't like, that wasn't really a goal of mine, but I just went out there and just played uh, my best basketball. We're going to go to our left. Please proceed. Oh. Uh, Dan Lobby, Cleveland Icon. For, for both of you, it, what kind of happened in that third quarter? What changed for you coming out of the locker room? I feel like we wanted it. When our locker room talked, we wanted it. We, I knew, I can tell by our faces, I can tell by our voices, we wanted it more. Yeah, I mean, we just told each other that we're good. Um, we've been in this position before and that we just got to come out wanting it more, and we did, and um, we locked in on both sides of the court. All right, Trey Modlin, WOVU 95.9 FM. Talk about how important it was to hold NC State to five assists for the game. Um, I thought that was great. Um, <laughs> our really, our main priority of the game was to box out and rebound. Their guards average um, about six rebounds a game, eight rebounds a game. So our main priority was to box out and rebound. But when you play defense like that, it's you know we're locked in and you know we try to keep that, keep it going. Over to our right, if you could raise your hand. Thank you, Lindsay. Power plays. Uh, for what was, you said that in the locker room, you just were talking about how you wanted it more. Is there any particular person? Was it a speech from Don? Was it you, Tahina, who was kind of speaking up? Who's vocal in those moments? Um, we all spoke as a team. Um, that's how close we are in genuine bond. Is that we know that we can do better, and everyone spoke up, and we just had to, you know, we just had to trust each other and know that we're gonna um, come out in the third and you know do what we do, and that's what happened. We're going to go to our right front row. If you could just raise your hand so student athletes can see you. They're up here. <laughs> All right, uh, Deion Cash, Fox Sports. Um, you've gotten so close to a championship. How does it feel to be at this point right now, one game away uh, from the chip? Uh, it feels good. Well, <laughs> we know our job. The job isn't done yet. We're going to have to play our butts off Sunday. We're going to stay to our right, Jim. Hey, Jim Trotter from The Athletic. Don and, and you all, I wanted to ask you your thoughts when Camilla went down um, at that point, and how is she at this point um, in terms of preparation for Sunday? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, pardon me. You want me to answer that? That was a, yeah, we're holding on questions for Coach. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yep, all so right. we'll start with. I'm um, not going to answer that. Yeah, she's all right. She played. Yeah, absolutely. What they uh, what they were thinking when she went down. Okay, go y'all can answer that. We'll start with <laughs> Ashlyn. I she wanted a medical update. <laughs> well, I knew she was gonna be okay. Camilla's a warrior. She's not gonna let oh, like a little injury like that affect her. She's gonna push and she and she's gonna be ready for Sunday. She's gonna like this answer, but she's a beautiful Brazilian warrior. <laughs> um, she's just awesome, man. She's gonna play through some pain, but that's just who she is, and she, you know, loves playing the game. So she's gonna push through that, and knowing that we got one more game, she's she's definitely gonna be okay. We'll take our next question online. We'll go to Joshua Louder. Joshua, please proceed with your question. 
Joshua Loud or Joshua Loud and Television Network. Um, my question is for the student athletes. Um, 29 to 6 run. Um, just where did you all hang your hat, whether that offensively or defensively? And um, ultimately, that led to tonight's uh, win. Congratulations. Tahina, can we start with you first and then we'll move to Ashlyn? I mean, Coach told us that was a six point quarter for them, and we were just like shocked because it didn't feel like that. It just felt like we were out there being locked in on defense and offense. And we just play the game that we know how to play. Um, at some points, we don't really know what's going on. We just know that we're having fun, and we just love being out there with each other. Yeah, um, we just play good defense, really. Any additional questions for our student athletes in the back? Robert Fembers, Cleveland.com. Um, you know, in that first half, I think you had a 10 turnovers, and then in the second, only five after that. How were you able to kind of, you know, stiffen up and really, you know, carry through in that last uh, stretch? Yeah, I contributed four of them. Um, <laughs> I don't like that stat. Um, seeing four turnovers next to my name, it, it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm mad at myself for letting that happen, especially in this type of game. Um, I know I'll do better, but we knew that we just got to do the simple stuff. We were trying to be too flashy. Some of us were trying to be a hero. And, you know, when we move the ball like how we did, it, you know, it makes the game fun and more easier. And we just know that we just got to do the simple things. Yeah. We're going to stay to the back. Yep. Hi, I'm DJ Lily Jade with 95.9. And first of all, congratulations. And so this is the question for both of you guys. How do you guys stay locked in? Because you've won 36 games. So how do you stay locked in and focused in the game? If we could start with Ashlyn first. Um, for me, I think we, we have a lot of fun and we know when to be serious. We, I think we have a good balance. And that balance is what helps us stay like, locked in. Like, we know we can play around with coach and each other, but we know when to be serious. Yeah, um, it's very balanced with our team. We know when to take care of business, and we know when to have fun with it. Um, but we've done a great job so far, and hopefully we can take care of business on Sunday and have even more fun. Mm -hmm. We're going to stay to our right. Uh, Cora Hall for the Greenville News. Ashton, I wanted to ask you, you know, you're back this year in a different role for this team to come up so big tonight. How does it feel different, and, and what does it mean to you to have you know, this performance in the Final Four? Um, it feels good. It feels good to show like what I can do and help my team. Like, of course, I'm going to try to do anything that I can help my team win, and that's what I did today. We're going to say to our right. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you. Hey, ladies. Um, at one point in the third quarter, you guys went on a 17 to one run, and I just wonder if you can kind of put into words or compare it to something what it feels like to be in that moment, to be that free and that focus, and to have that kind of dominance. Is that question for both? Okay, we'll start with you, uh, Ashlyn, again. Um, I think that's just that's what happens when you share the ball. Our team is not a selfish team. We know how to pass, and we know like what the um, right shot to take is, and that's what we did. We like to share the ball, and that's what happens when you share the ball. Yeah, our coach allows us to play free and play with each other and just um, be able to make adjustments mid-game and share the ball, as Ash said, and just be who we are. And that's who we are. We like to share the ball. And you know, when the ball goes in, you see you know, a couple of people also get the ball in. And it just creates a, a rotation. And that's what happened. And um, it felt good. <laughs> Any additional questions for our student athletes? Seeing none, ladies, thank you so much for your time this evening. Um, they will be now moving to the mix zone. A reminder that the locker room is open until 9.39. Start with questions for Dawn. We'll go to Jonathan, and then we'll move to Lindsay, and then we'll work around the room. I'll see you, Dion. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan Tannenwell from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Congratulations, Dawn. Watching Camilla play the way she played tonight, and then watching you talking to Aaliyah as you were coming off the floor, it reminded me of what you used to say about Aaliyah and hope, knowing that she would one day play in single coverage, I think is how you put it, a couple of years ago. And to know that you again now have a post player who can be that dominant in as big a game as this, what does it mean for you as the coach and the game planner and the tactician to have that? 
Um, I mean, you play to your strengths. Camilla is a strength of ours. Um, she's six seven. She's agile. Um, she can um, command the paint. Um, she played with a, um, a desire to win. Um, I think she asked for the ball a couple of times as well, meaning get her the ball. Um, and it's that, you know, it's a, I don't want to lose. I don't want our season to end in any way except the way I envisioned. And that's winning the national championship. And when you can put your play behind your vision, um, it, it makes a beautiful memory. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Don, to the point about Camilla, when I watched her today, what I was thinking is, I think she's gotten a lot better throughout this season. That's really hard to do because players are typically focused on the team, scouting reports. How has she been able to do that? And what ways do you see how she's improved since November? Um, Camilla's a better practice player. She's a better preparer. Like she is more aware of or more, more in tune. I mean, I, I think she knows exactly what we need her to do. Um, she watches film a lot more, like on her own. She watches with Coach Boyer. Like she was more willing to do all those other things to create an advantage for her when she's out there on the floor. Um, and then she is um, imposing her will um, each and every. Like she'll, she'll take two steps forward, one step back. Um, but they all do that. They they all, as players um, in this game, and you're playing at a high level, it's hard to just do that consistently. Um, so, I mean, greatness is a process. And she's still very much, in the, I think, in the beginning stages of her greatness. I think you'll see her play a lot better when she's with pro players. We're going to stay to our right. Dion, you'll go first. Kareem, we'll move to you, and then I'll get to the side room. Uh, Deion Cash, Fox Sports, congratulations, Coach. Um, what did you say to him after the first quarter? You guys shut him down to six, to, six for 28 from the second and third quarters as far as scoring. Um, Isaiah James had eight points in the first quarter. She ended up with 20, but she shot 17 times. What did you say to them to have that huge run in the third quarter? Um, I mean, it's more just simplifying. I mean, what we were doing and we were victims of what we worked on, and especially ball screen action. We knew they were going to go under, so we worked a little bit on rescreening. And, and and once they started icing us, we just kept trying to do the same things, and you know basically stop dribbling, more passing, more ball movement, and and, and once we start having that, it, I mean it wasn't magic. It was it was just simple basketball, and then we we just started getting stops and we got easy buckets and then we executed in the half court and build ourselves a, a, a pretty good lead and at that point it was just trying to keep the lead and play good basketball because we feel like good basketball is contagious and bad basketball is contagious so we want to take some some good basketball into Sunday. Thank you. I'm going to stay to our right with Kareem. Go ahead. Hey Don, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. What about that third quarter defense did you like the most? Um, I, I, I like the fact that we, we, we turned up. We turned up um, the heat. I mean, we put a lot more pressure on them to, to go deeper in their offense. We put a lot more pressure on the basketball, um, especially their point guards, um, the people that were initiating their offense. Um, so, you know, if you, can, if you get them to play a little bit outside of their comfort zone, um, you're, you're disrupting and you're dictating. And I thought we did a lot more of that in the third quarter. That created some easy buckets for us. We're going to move to our left. <clears throat> uh, Don McClary, Keon Sports. Coach, first of all, congrats on the win. Uh, in that third quarter, uh, where you only held NC State to um, six, six points, you guys held them to zero three-point shots. And we live in an age where the three-point shot is king. How important was that to keep them to such a low percentage, zero, in the lowest of the game? And was that speak to your players as well on defense? Um, we, we did a much better job than probably the last two games we had in, in running people off the three-point line and making them play, making them to us rather than three us. Um, it was their willingness to lock in, just lock in. They, they didn't want to lose. So a lot of what they said, um, Powell and, and Ashland was, you know, well before we went into the locker room to talk to them, they've, you know, they 
they had things squared away. Um, they're like that. Um, and they were probably talking more so about um, defense and rebounding. And then when we came in, it was more about just making sure that we are disciplined on our ball screen defense, which was very good in the third quarter, and, and simplifying offensively. So, I mean, that's how you open the game up when you're able to have that kind of stretch. Coach, we're going to switch to our right and go to Chantel, then we'll move to the back and go to Cam and then back up front. Hey, Don, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Coming into this year, other than Camilla and Raven, you didn't have anyone who averaged more than 13 minutes a game as a returner. Now you have nine players that average 15 plus minutes a game. At what point in sort of the formulation of this group did you know you'd be able to run with nine deep? And how much of a strength of that is yours, do you think? Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, when you go through a season, and especially in the beginning of the season, they're, they're all thinking they should start. They're all thinking they should play. Um, and then you have to figure out what unit works well together. And then you got to come up with a starting five. Like, and our starting five was who we started tonight. Um, and then uh, Ashton probably was a little disappointed that she wasn't a part of the starting five. But I do think it was the best thing for her development. Um, so, and then you got Saniya Fagan, who probably thought she should have been starting. Um, but it's more about combinations and who plays well together. Obviously, Camilla was going to be a focal point for us. So who plays better with Camilla um, in November? And, and, you know, now who plays best with Camilla in April? Um, right now it's Ash because Ash is just – and there's nothing that Chloe's not doing. And it's everything that Ash is doing. And so, I mean, each and every game, we could, we could count on a different player. And that was enough for them to build some confidence, even if they didn't play as much as they wanted to play the next game. But you can go back to them, and you talk to them, and you, you make it make sense to them. You don't lie to them. You don't sell them a false dream. You say, here's why you're playing. Here's why you're not playing. Here's why this person's playing more than you. Um, Here's why you're not. And here's how you get more minutes. And, and they believe it. They believe it because when, it, when, when their number's called, you know, they come through. And I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a luxury. It really is a luxury to have the ability to play as many players that we're playing. Coach, we're going to shift to our left. Let's go Cam. We'll come back up to the front, and then we'll move back. Coach Cameron Teague with the Athletic. I don't know, is it possible for you to put into words just how impressive a 20 rebound performance is for Ashlyn and how important that was to you, especially when Camilla got hurt and, and she, she was still there to fill, to fill the boards? I saw the two that she didn't go for. <laughs> one of the first half and one of the second, like they were like, I told her that coming off the court, like you didn't even go for the two that were right there in front of you. Um, I mean, Ash is Ash, Ash is, um, She's a leaper, she's a jumper, she's a reactor. Um, for her to come through for us um, was big. We don't, we, we don't win the game without her contributions. And I knew at the beginning of the game, I think Holly Rowe asked me before the game, what person? And obviously, Camilla's a focal point. So I, I know she's got to have a good game. But the X factor for me was, was Ashlyn Watkins. Her ability to defend, her ability to rebound, her ability. I mean, the block shot was impressive. The block shot in the third quarter was super impressive. So, I mean, she's got good reaction time. And, you know, we're very fortunate that she plays for, for us. We're going to stay to our left front row. Hey, Dawn. Excuse me. Uh, Chapel Fowler with the state. Saw that Raven Johnson left late. Is she going to be OK for Sunday as well? Yeah, 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 Raven, unless she's uh, Unless she's going to be rolling around here in the wheelchair, she's going to play. Best believe that. OK, we're going to go back to the second to last row. I believe it was in the red or purple. One of you raised your hand. <clears throat> Crystal Stone for Rising Media Stars. Uh, we've heard some of your players throughout the season say that this postseason run is personal. And Raven Samo or Raven, excuse me, Raven Johnson saying that this was revenge season for her. How much is that message uh, driven from your view, the passion of your teams to win? I, I, I give them their, that, that space. Whatever it is that can get them to execute and play and practice the way we need to, to prep for games, have at it. 
um, for me is it's about um, it's about coaching and teaching and um, figuring out a way to um, allow our players to have their dreams come true. I don't I don't attach anything to to our team besides um, being disciplined on how we need to play. Um, whatever whatever Raven needs to, to keep her playing at a, a confident level, whether it's a revenge tour or whatever she comes up with, because it's every day she'll come up with something. So um, if you if you go ask her a question, she'll say something else. So it, it's all kinds of tours, um, but I hope it, it ends in <laughs> being a national champion. We're staying to our left coach, second row. Trey Modlin, WOVU 95.9 <laughs> FM. Your team had four free throw attempts for the game, two in the second half when the game was more out of hand. How much of a point of emphasis will that be going into Sunday to, to be able to get to the line more? I don't, I don't think we control that. I don't think we control that. I mean, I mean, Camilla, I mean, we scored 44 points in the paint. Uh, I don't think it's all clean, but we're we're not going to worry about anything besides scoring more points than the next our next opponent. We we can't. That's that's one one area we can't control. Um, but we can't control how we execute, how we put the ball in the hole, how we rebound the basketball, how we execute ball screen defense, how we, you know, how we win loose loose balls um, in the intangible game. So I didn't even realize that. How many did they get? 18, 13, 18. We're going to move to our right. Uh, Cora Hall with the Greenville News. You've talked about Ashton a little bit, and I know you've talked about in the past her embracing being the sixth woman. But in terms of just her role specifically, she does a lot of the gritty stuff, getting on the boards, her defense, being a rim protector. Just how has she embraced that aspect of it? What stood out to you about the way that she really gets in there and does all those things for you guys? Um, I mean, Ashton just wants to win. Um, and Ashton also wants to feel special. And probably each and every one of our players want to feel special. And we try really hard to make them feel special and make it make sense to them. Um, we know they want, she wants, I know she wanted to start. Um, and we talk, we talk probably not right after the starting lineup was, uh, was, was named. Um, sh but, you know, we talked about her starting, we talked about why. Um, and, and, you know, we explained it to her. And then she went to work. You know, it, it was a it was something that she couldn't control. But what she could control is um, working out with me um, once a week, just getting some extra work in and kind of familiarizing herself with where she has spots that she could be effective on the, on the court. She's the one that did that. Like, and then when we decided that's, that's what we were going to do, I didn't text her. I made her text me to make sure this is something that she wanted to do. I, I did forget a couple of times and she reminded me, but it is that, it's, it's a process of being great. It's a process of, of, of trusting. Like I do think she trusts me and I do, I trust her. Um, as you can see, I mean, she played, you know, she played a lot of minutes for us. She's a very integral part of our, our success. And, and she only started maybe four or five games this season. Coach, we're going to swing back to our left-hand side, third row. Hi, Coach. Hannah Barton, Sports Capital Journalism. I was speaking with Raven in the locker room about two years ago, being this time of year injured last year, as she described it, her viral moment in the Final Four loss. And then to come this year and to be heading the national championship game and all of the emotion. And she said she's made a lot of growth. And when I asked her what was behind that, her first answer was Coach Daly and a big nod of the head. So what has the relationship with her been like as you've watched her grow um, from this time two years ago to now? Um, I mean, Ray Raven's process has been, and the development has been, has been um, a treat um, because she's such a hard worker. Like she's, she's so into being great and improving and she doesn't mind putting the work, putting the work you know, to, to make that happen. Um, she's, she's happy, she's a happy young lady. Like she doesn't have bad days. She comes in, she works hard every single day. Now, 
some of the stuff that comes out of her mouth is, you know, quite funny. Um, so she keeps me on my toes um, when it comes to that. But, I mean, she's a point guard that has, you know, an insatiable desire to get better and to learn. And for someone like that, I'm going to give her every ounce of me. Like, everything that she could take, I'm just going to pour into her. Um, but she came from a great high school coach, like a great. She won multiple um, high school championships, state championships. Um, she won multiple AAU championships. So she is. She comes from a pedigree of winning championships. And when you have point guards like that in your, you know, when you, in your program, you know, you, they're pretty consistent with that. We'll take our final question from Lindsay. Please proceed. Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. So Don, this is your ninth Final Four, your sixth as a coach, and you went to three as a player. Mm -hmm. As a player, you played for one national championship in 91. First, I wondered, do you remember that game pretty vividly? And what, I do. What can you share with us about that game? And also, how many national championships do you need to win as a coach to take away the sting of never winning one as a player? Um, I, I, I do remember 1991, um, New Orleans, correct? Up four with a minute and 20, we lose the basketball game. Um, can I get in trouble by talking about officiating like here, back in 1991? I'm not sure. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there were, there, there was questionable calls um, in, in that, and you might have to get, the skinny from Debbie Ryan, because I'm sure she remembers every single play. But I, I, I vividly remember um, us being up four and, and not being able to get it done. I, 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 do, I do think it was, you know, wasn't meant to be. And the fact that we won in 2017 um, made it really special. Um, special, so special that, um, and I don't want to pat myself on the back, but my teammates, that that my my Virginia teammates, when we won, I gave them miniature national championship trophies because they believed in that moment, and they were with me in several moments that that they they deserved it. I wanted them to feel something tangible of winning a national championship because they gave me the the desire to want to do it. Now I didn't think I was going to coach. I thought that was going to be that, but once I got into coaching, I, I wanted to check off, check that box off. So I don't. We've won two, um, so that's a distant memory that has now been replaced with winning. And there were there are much more people that you you get to celebrate with um, when you do it as a coach, and it's so it's so gratifying. I want to thank you for your time. Best of luck on Sunday, 3 o'clock, ABC.